reflection back on the college days, we used to go out and do outreaches every so often. And you get out on the street and you recognize the value of what you're really called to do. You know, all this church and the pews and singing and coming in here on Sunday mornings, those are real important. But that's not the real heart of God. The real heart of God is doing what we're about here to do. And that, that's all that matters to it. Because when we sit in our pews and we just stay quiet and we don't reach out to the people that are lost, it's like hiding something really special away from your loved ones. You never tell them about the secret. It's just an injustice. taking care of his property while I was in Southeastern. And he went into his closet and he took his own life. And I remember the feeling that I was supposed to talk to him. Just like what we talked about yesterday during that meeting. She's talking about how a friend died. She had been at work. And she didn't know if he knew Jesus. And this man I knew I was supposed to it's a very selfish thing to hold that back and hide that, that truth from people. All because we were either ashamed or afraid. You know, we're concerned for ourselves, you know. And so God, I pray even right now that you would begin to cultivate the soil of those places that we're traveling to. Father, that you would begin to open the door to this community. That you would break down the walls and reach into this community. That you would begin to change the atmosphere, the very air that we walk through. As we travel through these streets, not only safety of our teams, but I pray that you would be over every person that's in this community. That they would begin to soften and that our hearts would be heard would make sense because the enemy has a way of clouding the mind and plugging the ears. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would plug every ear to soften every heart and that every mind would be straightened so this morning. In the name of Jesus, that the darkness would be intruded by the light that we carry. And that light only comes from you, God. It's not because of my magnanimous and awesome personality. It's because you exist in me. Only when you breathe through us are we able to penetrate that darkness. Father, I pray that you would have your way. We've been crying out for this day. We've been crying out for your outreach to this community forever. It's time to take comfy road back. It's time to take comfy settlement back. And every square inch of this area would be ours in the name of Jesus. And then we're going to reach into this community. And Father, we do have our hopes up. This morning we're going to sing a song. We're going to get our hopes up, Lord God, and we're praying that you have your way here. That you begin to push in to this community. In the name of Jesus, have your way.
Praise the Lord. He scares me. Please use the wheelchair we gave you, Roger. Amen. Roger was in an accident. We thank God that he's here with us today. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to shift. We're ready. We're going to shift. Amen. Come on, team. Praise God. It's going to be an exciting day. I pray, it's my prayer that we get stretched a little bit and challenged a little bit because there's more we need to do and more we need to be. I want to say a big thanks to John and his team again for being here. And then also to our, 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 our pillars in our church, our pillars. Amen. The heartbeat of God is prayer and evangelism. We ain't doing no more Sunday mornings, Wednesday night activities or conferences without that. Everything will be predicated on what we've done in prayer and what we're doing in evangelism. All other stuff will just fall into place. Amen. So thank you. Buying into this is not the word. Thank you for just stepping up to who God called us to be a long time ago. Amen. Come on. He's been waiting and we're here. We were thinking. Good morning, everyone. We're honored to be here today. Thank you, Pastor Steve. We appreciate the worship team for bringing us into the spirit too. Last night on the way home, I heard from my wife and daughter that they didn't really like me reading. They wanted me to go off the hip, so I decided that I wasn't going to read what I had prepared for my intro this morning. I just want to flow with the Holy Spirit. And uh, what you said about everything being based in prayer. That's us. We don't do anything without praying, seeking the Lord. I got saved for reals 30 years ago. Uh, raised in a Christian home. Dad, of course, my mom was 12. I said, well, the heck with that. I'm not supposed to get divorced. That's not the book. So, I went rebel from the age of 12 to 30. And let me tell you something, I was bad. But I gave my heart to the Lord. I was all in. And uh, the one thing that goes into me more than anything else. I've already worn out a whole bunch of these. This is a new one. And I, on this particular Bible, I have looked for every scripture that I can find on Jesus. All the miracles, everything, prophecies, everything that's about him, I'm, I'm highlighting in this one. I love God's word. It's my life. I've had many prophetic words spoken over me, but like so many Christians, when I came into the kingdom, I was damaged goods. And I don't know if any of you have ever heard, have heard this before, but hurt people hurt people. Have y'all ever heard that? Yes. And people who know me, a lot of them will say that the one word that fits me more than any other word is tenacity. When I bite down on something, I don't let go for anything. And a pastor told me about 10 years ago, he said, John, you want to know one of the differences between me and you? I said, sure. He said, you are task-oriented. You will achieve the task at the expense of relationships. And I kind of laughed because he, he nailed me. He said that he was the opposite. He said he was people-oriented, and he would drop a task for the sake of a relationship. 
And uh, since I've been saved, I've probably done 40 events, maybe more. And a lot of those events was at the expense of a lot of relationships. And God has had to humble me and break me. And now, I can honestly say, people, relationships, are more important to me than anything else. Not to the Lord, of course. You know what I mean. On December the 27th, 2015, I was sitting in a church service, and I was having a discussion with myself about my own evangelism because I was out there sharing the Lord with people a lot and I was wondering how many people can I uncomfortably share Jesus with every day I started running numbers I thought two I'm already doing that that's easy what about seven? Oh, don't be stupid <laughs> That's way too many. So I settled on three. I said to myself, I can uncomfortably share Jesus with three people every day. And so as I sat there, I came up with a goal of 1,000 for 2016. I'm going to share Jesus with 1,000 people in 2016. And I'm going to record the first names of every person in their notebook. A calendar notebook. And on August the 14th of 2016, I hit 1,000 people. And I wrote it down in my book. One thousand plus one on that day. And you can see I wrote the names of the people. And I carried this in my pocket with me every day. And I thought, you know, sometimes I'm absent-minded and I might leave something behind. So I did a backup here in this book. And uh, it looked like that. Can everybody see that? Well, I kept going. And by the end of 2016, I had talked to 1,422 people about Jesus. And so I kept going. And at the end of three years of me writing down the first name of every encounter, I was right at some odd 3,000 something people. And I divided it out, and I was just under three people a day. And it came out to like 2.78 or something like that. And Rick said, John, you got to start a ministry. And I was like, nah, I don't know about that. And he kept pushing it and encouraging me, let's say. And so Rick and I started the ministry in September of, uh, I believe it was 2017, we started this. And uh, I don't know how or why other than the Holy Spirit putting it into my heart to do baptisms. Because I kept reading the word and I'm like, well, baptism is just part of it. Jesus says to baptize people. So why aren't we doing that? Why does it have to be formally done in church by pastors? And so I went out there and got me a horse trough, I borrowed it for the bit. And that day I baptized eight people. I was like, what? And so today, I don't know, Reborn Ministries has probably baptized over 150 people or something like that. I'm not tracking it, keeping up with it, but there's been a lot of people that have been baptized. Rick and I baptized 33 people at the school one day. 33, 33, we started out with a principal. We had two staff members and then 30 kids that got baptized. And uh, how am I doing on time? I'm good.
So, without being formally trained in baptism, I got a couple of quick funny stories. I walked away from my baptismal setup one time. I had a canopy, it was really plush. And, and I walked away, and, and uh, I was getting prayed for in the prayer tent across the field. And as I was walking back, I saw a lady standing in the baptismal tank with two of the guys with me that were helping me in the ministry that day. And they were all just standing there with her standing soaking wet in the water. And I walked up to her, and I said, hi, how are you? She says, fine. I said, would you like a towel? <laughs> and she said, yes. So before I tell you where that really comes home, I want to tell you the other funny one. And that is, we were in an event in Clearwater, and a man that had baptized me before was um, standing in the baptismal horse trough with a man. Standing in the horse trough with a man, fixing to baptize him. And uh, it suddenly dawned on me that my friend who had baptized in a swimming pool with me and he had baptized in the ocean had never baptized anybody in a horse trough. And the video camera and about 40 people were around us and instantly I thought catastrophe is about to happen. So I ran around a group of people standing there and I got my hands under his back and his head as he hit the water from a full stand. And so together we picked this big man back up out of the water. And I was looking at my friend going, really? <laughs> if I had not seen that, that would have been messy. And it was on film. <laughs> well, back to the first lady. One of the things that I really enjoy doing in events is sharing Jesus with people. And I asked this woman if she would like to give her heart to Jesus, and she said yes. And I asked her if she would like to repent of her sins. Y'all ready for a shock? Her eyes burned, got real watery, and she blurted out to me, I've had three abortions. What if we had just baptized that woman and let her go? let her walk away. We would have missed that. She was in so much pain and I was able to walk her through inner healing in a very special way that day. And so my heart is when I share Jesus with people is because when I look at them I say to myself, I love you. And I really, like I said before, I really love people. And then all of a sudden, my mind changes gears. And I start thinking, wait a minute. What if this person doesn't know Jesus? That would be very bad if they died today. So I asked them. In many different ways, there's many ways to ask somebody if they know Jesus. <clears throat> I ask people straight up, if you die today, where will you spend eternity? And that gets people real, really fast. And, and, and the conversation becomes very surreal. And they have to think about that. And then we start talking about heaven and hell. And then, if you're bold and you're willing, you can confront sin and let them know that without Jesus, they're going to die and they're going to go to hell for all eternity. But then you always have to bring it back in love and say, but God doesn't want that. He loves you. Sometimes you have to repeat that. He loves you. He loves you. He doesn't want that. What he wants is a relationship with you. That's why he created you. He wants to have a relationship with you now, but for all eternity, too. And when, you, when I go there with people, 
That's when it gets beautiful. So, I know I'm probably right at my time. Veronica's standing up. She's kind of hovering around me, so I'm going to turn it over to her. Thank you so, God, so much, guys, for letting me share my heart. a mandate to go and make disciples. Matthew 28, 19. This takes obedience and an active pursuit to reach people with the truth of the gospel and to overcome fears and assumptions. And trust the Holy Spirit to empower you. Jesus offers these encouraging words. Do not be anxious about how you should defend yourself or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour, what you ought to say. So we need to be like Jesus. Throughout the New Testament, he always said, not my will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. So we take ourselves out of it. We take our common way of thinking, our problem solving, our attitude out of our mission. Our mission should be focused on the work of Jesus Christ. Our hearts and minds must be committed to serving God by spreading the good news of Jesus, his life, burial, and resurrection. So how do we do this? How do we get started? We look for opportunities. Those closest to us, sisters, brothers, relatives, co-workers, neighbors. Think about it like this. Not share the gift of salvation with those that are closest to you, do you think you can effectively share your faith with others? Yes? No? Anyone? Why? That's why we have to continue to have, live a life that's pleasing and satisfying, satisfying the Lord. Thank you for that. Okay, well, we speak to our family members, and this will be one of the greatest skills, I think, that we can learn because we know them. And they know us. We know what to expect of them. So what if you have a relative that is a how would you handle that? Would you try one time and give up? Because they're very resistant. No. We don't give up. We 
You keep sharing your word with them. They reject it, you walk away. Go to people in prayer. The next time we see them, we give them a word. Whether they reject it or not, that's up to them. We do our job in spreading the word of God. No matter how many times they reject it, because they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting Jesus. But it's no real life. They have an opportunity. Keep that in mind. God gives them so many opportunities while they're living. Because once you die, that's your time to So, these are some things that we should remember when sharing our faith. Be intentional. Your goal is to share the gospel. Pray for guidance. That you share, I'm sorry, that you are in tune with their concerns, interests, and burdens. Be a good listener. Gather details of what they're saying. Basically, they're painting a picture of what they're going through. Trust the Holy Spirit to guide you. And in John 16, 8, it says, When he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Therefore, we are working with the Holy Spirit. It's not, we're you're not doing anything. We're just being a vessel that the Holy Spirit uses. Be pleasant. Do not interrupt the speaker. If possible, you want to share with your own journey. We tend to relate better with our own journey. Place full confidence in God's word, not your ability. Have him or her read the scriptures out loud. Stay in control of the conversation and do not allow it to go off topic. By doing this, you're in control of the conversation and you're able to disarm any arguments. Be direct when asking if they would like to accept Jesus, great salvation plan. If they say no, not now, any rejection, don't take it personally. Just remember, if you're planting the seed, the seed sometimes needs time to grow. Provide him or her with the gospel books or any material that you feel God is leading you to give them. And if they say yes, lead them into a salvation prayer. I have a general salvation prayer. But when you're leading them into prayer, you say a first portion of it and have them repeat it. Give an example. Dear Lord Jesus, and then you'll have them repeat after you. Of course, you will say that and then repeat after you. So you will want to go slow with that. But this is just a general Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, also we want to let them know or tell them the importance of continuing to see God. So how would we tell them how to continue to see God? How do you do it? I'm sorry? Amen. Praying? You must stay in the Word. Even as Christians now, a lot of times we don't study or read the Word like we should. Think of it as food in your soul. How many of you go days without eating? Natural food. Think about it. I'm not talking about when you fast day. I'm just saying, natural food. How many of you go without eating food? You think you get up in the morning, gotta have breakfast. In the evening, gotta have lunch. All night, you gotta have dinner. Same thing with the word. That it becomes a lifestyle for you. Um, okay, also praying. And then you want to encourage them to find a Bible, one thing in there, sorry, a Bible based church. And also pray for guidance. Ask them to pray for guidance of where God leads them to go to church. It's not that when we go out and we're trying to get them to come to our church, because most people get offended. And they, that's what they think. Oh, they're recruiting. No, we're 
the shedding blood of God. You pray wherever God leads you, that's where you go. But of course, we encourage that. We call out to them, and of course, you'll want to give it your pastor to see how he wants you to do that as far as being follow-ups. Um, just wanted to go over some scriptures here. For every human being is made in God's image. Genesis 127 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Every man is born in sin and separation from God. Romans 3.23 states, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The way of forgiveness is eternal life, and it's only through Jesus. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Acts 14, 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we can be saved. Our duty in life is to fulfill the great commission. And the end of this scripture, where Peter said, I mean in 1 Peter 3, 15, 16, but in your heart, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile you or your good behavior Christ will be put to shame. We will, we must not give into fear or anxiety. We must not give into fear or anxiety. We must be committed to trusting in Christ our Lord. Remember when they reject you, they are really rejecting Christ. Amen. Okay, so with that will we conclude my teaching and John. John will come up and we're going to talk So let's do this. Let's get in groups of three or four. I know the two ladies are staying to get lunch ready. But other than that, um, let's get in groups of three or four. Unless there's, I know Steve, while we're doing this, he's got to get the video reset and set up and all that. But if you're going, who's going in this section here? Um, who's going out? Amen. Um, let's um, try to figure out how to do last night and this morning before I went straight to bed and came straight back. That's okay. Amen. For Val, you need to witness to your cat or your dog. Okay? Very serious. I'm kidding. Um, you guys want to? Y'all going to get involved with it? Right? Y'all can do a miracle service and have Roger come out of his wheelchair. That would be cool. Okay. So, you three guys. Um, Y'all scared me. Um, Drew, you're with these three guys. I'm assigning you to these three guys. You're with them. I want you to go with them, Drew. They need some adult supervision. <laughs> okay? We need to move quickly. Drew's with you guys. I'm just kidding, but I want Drew with y'all. Okay? Drew will be a good impactor. Um, you two guys are with me. Um, Marlon, were you with me? Yes. Okay. Um, let's, let's do this so we can kind of go evenly here. Um, Justin. Go with Jeff and Robin. Yes, sir. Okay? And then Mitch, Marlon. Did I miss anybody? Okay, this is going to be cool, fun. I'm sure they're going to talk about it more. Be led by the Spirit. Yesterday, when I was, I'll do a 30-second deal. When I was talking to this lady, I got some of the strangest looks. Okay? But from this lady. I did have a, a person that was influenced by an evil spirit because they were using foul language. We heard this, come in there and try to interrupt what I was doing. And 
And I called, I was very careful how I did it, but I called it out and exposed it. Okay? They were trying to compare Jehovah's Witness to Christianity. And they were very, the enemy's very subtle. But so is, so was I. I shut it down real fast and said, there is no comparison. They're two totally different things. The, the, the doubt he already had in his mind, I put more doubt, I cast more doubt on that. He was not my assignment, but I spoke into his life and he didn't even know it. I shut that voice down. So I was careful how I did it. I was very tactful. Now, let's do this. If we can have, I tried this on Sunday morning. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Can we have, um, that's good, it's not just me. Can we have everybody shift in, like, from, um, y'all just a little bit. Y'all are, y'all are close. You guys, like, all the way. This is the amen section over here. They just have to come along. One day they're going to start shouting us down. And you guys, y'all can slide in. Let's let's get as close to the middle. Y'all are fine, Eddie. Y'all are fine. Yeah, just sit on top of Eddie. Uh, uh, you will. That way, I get what John's saying because I experience that on Sunday morning. He's trying to be Stretch Armstrong here, looking all different directions. I actually put out the signs now. Please don't sit down. Um, so this is cool. Do you guys do you guys think that you can keep your attention with me for twenty minutes before we take a break? Or do I need to let everybody take a break now? Twenty minutes. Stand up stretch. Why don't y'all take a two or three minute break? That way, that way, if I am boring, at least you've already stretched a little bit. That's so much that you want to teach. And so I talked to Pastor Steve about it, and he said that he's uh, good for that. So bear with me as we start rocking this out, okay? Y'all ready? Yes. Thank you, Drew. Four years ago, I woke up on a December morning feeling compelled to drive over to Tampa Bay Steel. It's a Christian-owned business. And they were a big account of hours. I used to drive for a company called Anywhere Transport. And uh, Tampa Bay Steel, they sell steel. So we got to go over with a flatbed truck and pick it up. And I had witness to those guys in the shop. And believe me, there were some rough dudes in there. And I was sharing Jesus with them for about a year or so. And on this morning that I woke up, I just felt in my spirit that I should go there. And I had no reason to go other than an overwhelming feeling in my spirit that I should go. So I drove over there, and as I drove in the parking lot, I saw three people standing in a circle holding hands and praying beside a car. So I got out, and I walked up to them, and, and I said, hey, man, what are y'all doing, praying or something? And we introduced ourselves, and I immediately knew why God sent me there. He wanted us to meet. They talked with me about the Pocket Testament League, and I explained, and they explained to me that they were in Tampa visiting their large donors, showing them some love for their support. I showed them my pocket calendar and shared some of my adventures in evangelism stories with them. We prayed together, and they asked me if we could take the group selfie together. They invited me to their upcoming breakfast, and I said, yeah, I'll be there. And I'm really glad that I went a few weeks later because I met some incredible people there that I wouldn't have met had I not gone. And that morning, they invited me to be a speaker representative for them. And after going through a pretty tough screening process, they accepted me. The league publishes and distributes millions of pocket gospels around the world. And as a speaker rep, 
they give me pocket gospels for presentations like this, and I get to give them away when I'm out and about too, which is kind of cool. I've given out hundreds of these gospels to John Booklets. You can use them to confidently share your faith boldly. They fit in your pocket. They come in different translations and in different languages. You can hand them out whenever, wherever the Holy Spirit prompts you. And you can use them to walk people through the salvation process. I'm going to share a couple of my evangelism encounters with you guys using the pocket gospels. Y'all still with me? Am I boring yet? Not boring yet? Okay, good. One day I was picking up some wire from a customer, and I walked past two men that were sitting on a ramp. I said, hello. I could tell they had foreign accents, so I asked them where they were from. One of them said he was from Bosnia, and the other man said he was from Jacksonville. I said, Jacksonville? Where'd you come from before that? He said, Iran. Ah. Oh. I said, do you read Farsi? He said, yeah, he did. I said, well, I got something for you to read. And I walked down to my car, and I got a Gospel of John book from behind my seat. And I walked back up the ramp, and I handed it to him. He smiled and told his friend, it's a Bible. <laughs> he said that he could read some of it, but it was written in Arabic, not in Farsi. I said, oh, I thought it was Farsi. Now I know the difference, right? I said, I got another one in my car. Maybe that one hit the spot. So he walked down the ramp with me. I opened up my trunk, and I reached into my tackle box. And guess what? I had one written in Farsi in there. We talked for a couple of minutes, and he showed me some of the differences between the two languages. And he kept both flipping. I said, hey, man, can we get a picture together? Flick. I made a delivery to a, yeah, if it was on the screen up there, I wouldn't have to turn around. I made a delivery to a new hospital <laughs> construction site in Wachula. And after completing my delivery, I had to leave myself. So I walked over to the portable toilets, and there was a pump truck right in front of them, and there was a man there servicing the units. And uh, I did that. Coming out of the Navy for two years, I, I had a one-man operation, and uh, it was a portable toilet business called Portable. So I could relate to that guy, and uh, I felt like I should talk to him. So I started up a conversation, and I discovered that he'd been in an accident recently, and that he had lost his right eye. I couldn't tell that he had a temporary eye, so I started squinting, you know, looking at his eye. And he explained that he was going to have his temporary eye taken out and have a glass eye put in in the upcoming week. And I listened to his story about his accident and the upcoming eye replacement. And I asked him if I could ask him a personal question. He said, sure. I said, where will you spend eternity if you die today? And he was like, looking away, looking around a little bit. He thought about how he was going to answer me, and he said, well, So I asked his permission if I could respond. He said, yeah. And I explained salvation and how he could live forever with his creator in heaven. I asked him if he thought our meeting was just a coincidence. He goes, oh, no. He said, you're the second person in a week to bring up God like this. I said, well, you might want to think about why God is trying to get your attention here. I asked him, I said, hey, man, can I pray for you? He said, yeah, he, this is what I love. He bowed his head reverently. I said, hey, can I, can I touch you? He said, yeah. I placed my hand on his shoulder, and I prayed for his upcoming appointment with the eye doctor. See, I was listening. I spoke health and life into his body, and I prayed that his body would receive the glass eye without complications, and that he would be even more handsome than he is now when they finish the operation. I asked God to give him a personal encounter with him and that he would accept Jesus into his life. I did that while I was praying. We shook hands and I walked to my car and headed back to Tampa. I might never run into either one of those gentlemen again. I pointed them to Jesus. I planted some seed. I hope the seed was planted in fertile ground and that they're going to grow a hundredfold. Does everybody have a Gospel of John booklet? Ready?
Identity, Reference, Guide, and a Membership Card. Three things. Has everybody got that? I want everybody to pick up your pocket gospel and hold it high in the air. You ready, Jeff? All right, while you're holding up, I want everybody to say, I love Jesus, three times. Ready? I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. You guys did all right? <laughs> Jeff, you got it? Do it. This little man was at our I Love Jesus. He was our I Love Jesus winner when we did an outreach about a month ago. Truth and the life. No one comes to the Father 
gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God proved that he accepted Jesus' death as the way to life by raising him from the dead. So Jesus Christ is the only way to reach the Father. You probably ask yourself the question, where am I going? Jesus is inviting you, but he's also warning you too. Jesus says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. If you don't find your way to God through Jesus, you will never know God personally, and your life will have no lasting value. When you die, you'll be separated from God forever in a horrible place called hell. And that would be very bad. Yes. But there's good news. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and establish a personal relationship with Him, you'll experience the kingdom of God here and now. And you know what else? You'll be with the Father and the Son and with all of us really cool people. guys are here, so I'm thinking all of you are believers. But maybe somebody brought you here, and you haven't made a decision yet to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Just like Burger King doesn't make you a Big Mac, or, sorry, did I say that wrong? Going to McDonald's don't make you a Big Mac. Going to Burger King don't make you a Walker. And attending church don't make you a Christian either. Years ago, I was in a revival service at a church I attended, and the pastor's wife stood up and accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior. Everybody was like, what? It turned out that she was a PK. Y'all know what that is? No. I know there's two people in the room with this. I ain't saying who they are. Now. <laughs> but she was a pastor's daughter and had been in church her entire life. She said that everyone assumed that she was saved. But nobody ever asked her. Maybe one of you hasn't accepted Jesus yet. Yeah. If you haven't submitted yourself totally over to Christ, where will you spend eternity? Heaven or hell? Which way will you go? Jesus says, whoever hears my words and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned and has crossed over from death to life. If you want to know how to find your way to God, I can help you with that. There are three steps you can take. Y'all see where they are in your Bibles? First, admit that you're a sinner and turn away from sin. Second, believe that when Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for your sin. And he conquered death by raising Jesus from the dead, giving life to everyone who believes Third, accept his free gift. Ask Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior. When someone believes in his name, he gives them the right to become the children of God. Jesus says that unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Some of you may be familiar with the conversation in the Bible where Philip and the eunuch were riding in the chariot together. Once the eunuch understood that Isaiah was writing about Jesus Christ being the Messiah, he said, look, there's water. What hinders me from being baptized? And Philip answered him and he said, if you believe in your heart, you may. And then he said, well, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So Philip baptized him in water. Notice the absence of the sinner's prayer in that story. You won't find the sinner's prayer anywhere in the Bible. You want to know why? Because it's not in there. The exact wording doesn't matter. What matters is the attitude of your heart. Does everybody see the prayer? Did somebody volunteer to stand up and read the prayer right now? Now, quick. Dang, through your face. Here is a prayer to see Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It is a subjective prayer.
Somebody gives their, when somebody gives their heart to Jesus and when they recommit their life to Christ, that is a, a very big deal. So with that said, they might appreciate you having them fill in their name and the date on the decision page. You can find the decision page immediately after chapter 21 of the first book. Everybody turn there just so you know where it is. Everybody see it? Or the check mark table. Yes, Okay. The pocket gospel that you use to lead somebody to Christ is not yours. It's theirs to keep. In some situations, you may never see them again. If you want to build a relationship with offer to connect with them at a later date. How you wrap it up and close, that's up to you. If you feel comfortable giving them your information, you can write your name and contact information in the booklet. You can give them your business card. You can give them your email address if you don't want them calling you. You can ask them for they, their name and their contact information if you want to go that route. Go with your gut under the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Give your new brother or sister an elbow or foot bump. COVID 19, new parameters. Or if nobody's looking, you can give them a hug and just say, hey man, I love you. You walk away smiling, knowing that your daddy in heaven is pleased with you. Even though you can't see him, the angels be kids. Now set your pocket gospels down and pick up the ready reference. Resource guide. Y'all ready? Open it all the way up so that it's one. 
one sheet. Take a moment to look it over. It's slam packed with info that you can use for evangelism. And if you're serious about sharing the gospel with people, you can get a lot out of this. Everybody look up at the top left column. Do you see the 10 suggestions for, the 10 suggestions for sharing your faith effectively? I've asked Christina, Alex, and Joshua to do a, a little demonstration for us. I want everybody to follow along with them in the record.
anybody ever seen the revival more of book worship than the Lord did this morning? Sorry? It's called Revive Florida or Time to Revive Ministries. They they give you bracelets and Bibles and and cheap cards. Pretty cool. And each one of you are about to get one.
Grace Family Church. And I said, that's a good church. I prayed for him and asked God to give him a supernatural desire for him and his, for, for his word and for a deep relationship with him. When I said amen, I told him I had something for him. And I walked over to my car and I got out a revived Florida bracelet and a Bible out of my trunk, and I walked back over and handed it to him. I showed him the yellow scripture on the bracelet and the yellow tab in the Bible. I opened it up, and I asked him to read the verse that was highlighted, and he went through the verse and on the bracelet, and then I had him, each, I had him read each one of the highlighted verses. I asked him for a picture, and we took the picture together, and his partner when he took the picture, he said, well, I want a Bible and bracelet, too. So I said, okay, it'll cost you a picture. <laughs> you heard how I approached those men, right? There was a pattern there. But if you notice, I was very sensitive and inquisitive about them. Right? My approach is rarely the same. I would like to think that the Holy Spirit speaks to me whenever I approach people. But that isn't always the case, and sometimes I operate my flesh. One thing I do know, it's better for the Holy Spirit to run the show. He does a lot more good than I do. How about you? What kind of approach can you use with people? What if I tell you that you can use the same approach every time? All you have to do is learn one question. Change the wording to fit the situation. Are you ready? Here's the question. How can I pray for you? How hard is that? Let me hear y'all ask it. Pray. You simply walk up to somebody and ask them if you can pray for them. You frame it however you want. Wait, wait, wait. One more thing. You might want to walk up to somebody with a smile on their face. Think about it. Would you want an unjoyful person praying for you? Come on. What do you do if somebody says they don't need prayer? I'll tell you what you don't do. Don't get offended. Don't say okay and walk away either. Just take a deep breath. Plant your feet. And start up a conversation. Break the ice. Let them know that you care. People will open up to receive prayer. So expect a yes. Okay. You ask a person if you can pray for them and they say yes. Now what do you do? To demonstrate love with your eyes and with your smile. You stand there and you listen attentively to whatever they say. And don't interrupt them. Focus on what they say while at the same time you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. When they finish talking, you say, can I pray for you? If they say yes, go ahead and pray for them. Remember to address any needs and concerns they give you and always pray a blessing over them. When you finish praying with them, you pull out this colorful wristband and ask, can I give you this as a simple reminder that somebody prayed for you? If, if you see them staring at your bracelet, everybody hold up your bracelet just so you can see it. If you see them staring at the bracelet, you can hand it to them. Or sometimes I expand it, everybody expand it like somebody's going to stick their wrist inside. Pull it, pull it apart so somebody can stick their wrist inside. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to stick their hand in it. Ask them if they have a minute for you to explain the colors. And then what you do is casually pull out one of these bottles from behind your back or out of your purse. I like to keep mine tucked in back in my back so that it just comes out real easy and I hand it to them. I just happen to have one of those bottles right here, that's what you tell them, and it goes with that bracelet. So now they've got the bracelet in their Bible in their hand. And then you say, would you mind reading through this with me? Next, hand, you've already given them the Bible, so 
Yes, they would put their, their thumb or their finger on the number one tab. Can everybody put your finger on the number one tab? You open it up. When they open it up, you ask them if they mind reading the highlighted verse out loud. Sometimes the lighting may not be that good or they might have trouble reading the verse. So you just ask them, hey, can you read that okay? If they say they can read it, you have them read Romans 3.23. And when they finish, you simply say, this is sin. Next, you have them open number two and read the highlighted verse there. Faith comes by hearing. So you have them read Romans 6.23. And it goes from sin to death. And then you go to number three, and it's Romans 5.8. And you have them read Romans 5.8. The red is for love, and love takes away the death and the sin. It's really important to go through all five verses if they let you. You take them from the bad news to the good news. And you get to the color blue, which is Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, and that's the number four, and you talk with them about the word faith. And when you have faith on what Jesus did for us on the cross, sin and death are gone. Just like that. The fifth and final color is green. And you say, hey, can you see what it says here? And they say, yeah. And it's Romans 10, 9, and 10. And the color green represents life. Now here's the best part about all this. It's based on four words. Love. You love them, and as you love them, you listen to what they're saying. When you listen to them, you're also listening to the Holy Spirit. And that gives you discernment. That's love, listen, discern, and you can respond to the gospel. After you've loved, listened, and discerned, then you simply ask, is there anything keeping you from placing your trust in Jesus right now? And if they say no, then you ask, would you like to surrender your life to Jesus now? They say yes, you can refer to the orange tab. Everybody go to the orange tab. It's not on your wristband. You can explain what it means to have a new life in Christ. And this is not just a checklist saying, oh yeah, by the way, I said yes to Christ. It's I'm surrendering my life to him as Lord and Savior. We're the messengers. Our job is simply to deliver the good news. Does everybody have a bracelet, a Bible, and a card? Cards are like three by five cards. Y'all got those too? Everybody lay the Bibles and the bracelets down on the pew and hold up the card and look at it. How many scriptures are there? How many? Five. How many? I can't hear y'all. Five. five. Okay, that's better. Word down. Uh, used in order. They are the gospel message. We've been talking about them already, haven't we? You can put the cards in your wallet or in your purse. And any any time you want to explain the gospel, just pull out the card and walk through them. It's a win-win. Set your cards down and pick up your bracelet. Hold up the bracelets and look at them. color yellow represents sin. The verse, okay, you are keeping up with me. The verse on the yellow strip is Romans 3.23. Black represents death. And the verse on the black strip is Romans 6.23. Red represents love. The verse on the red strip is Romans 5.8. Blue represents faith. Verse on the blue strip is Ephesians 2 8 and 9. Green represents light. And the verse on the green strip is Romans 9 and 10. What does the color yellow represent? Yes. What does the color black represent? Yes. Yes. What about the color red? Love. Love. And blue? Green. Green. Light. Light. Nice. I want everybody to place the bracelet on your wrist and pick up the Bible and look at it. You can 
see there are color inventions on tabs, cut with numbers on them. Notice there are six colors with numbers on the fibers, but there's only five colors on the bracelets. Let's take a look at them. Place your finger on the yellow number one tab and open the Bible to that page. The highlighted verse is Romans 3.23. I would like for everybody to read the verse out loud together. For all have sinned and all shall the glory of God. Color yellow represents sin. Place your finger on the black number two tab and open the Bible to that page. The highlighted verse is Romans 6.23. Everybody to read the verse out loud. Ready? For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Color black represents death. death. Place your finger on the red number three tab and open the Bible to that page. The highlighted verse is Romans 5 8. Everybody read the verse out loud together. But God comes to his own love. Awesome. Color red represents what? Love. Place your finger on the blue number four tab and open the Bible to that page. The highlighted verse is Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Let's all read that together. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of his Lord. Blue represents faith. faith. Place your finger on the green number five tab and open the Bible to that page. The highlighted verse is Romans 10, 9, and 10. Everybody read the verse out loud together, please. Everybody see the person standing in front of them? No? Clean your eyes. They're right there in front of you. You see them now? All right, just check. Most people are not patient enough to stand there and let you read through all of this. But how important is their salvation? Are they worth the time to you that they will stand there? Somebody took a lot of time and effort and initiative to write out the salvation message and put it in these Bibles. And they're good to use. If you really want to become effective at winning souls, you need to put some skin in the game. You should take the time on your own to learn how to walk new believers into the kingdom without having to read a long script to them. Does that make sense? Let's go through. Your new life in Christ is a call to discipleship. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The Bible says you're a new creature. You may not feel different, then again you might. Emotions often follow or indicate a change of heart. However, it is God's word in the Holy Spirit. Spirit that gives the assurance that you belong to Him. When you ask God to forgive your sins, He forgives you. You have His free gift of salvation and you have a new life in Christ. You have a new start. You have a new heart and a new spirit lives inside of you. Thousands of years ago, the prophet Ezekiel described what God would do for you. He says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I'll put within you. And I'll remove the heart of stone from your flesh. And I'll give you a heart of flesh. Is the person that you're sharing this with, are they paying attention to you right now? Are they looking into your eyes? Or are they looking around squirming? 
they need you too. The apostles baptized every new believer with water. Baptismal, baptism shows what takes place in every believer in Jesus Christ. You die to your old nature. Your sins are washed away in the blood of Jesus, and you're raised to a new life in Him. Fall in love with your Bibles. It's your lifeline. Study it with other believers and by yourself. You can start in the book of John. You will learn who Jesus is and what He wants to teach you. Spend time with the Lord in prayer. Prayer is talking with God and also letting Him talk with you. Plug into the church. You'll learn to pray with others and have others pray for you. And you'll experience what it's like to be loved by others. Jesus tells his disciples that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. And he tells us to go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that he commands us. And he promises that he's going to be with us even to the end of the age. You guys still with me? All disciples are commanded to make disciples by telling people about Jesus. Jesus says in John 20, 21, As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Tell others what God's done for you, how you repented of your sins and are forgiven, because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Tell them how Jesus died for you, for your sin, but he rose again so that you can have new life in him. Tell others in love, with your words and with your deeds. Talk with your family. Talk with your friends. Talk with strangers about Jesus. Don't be afraid or tempted not to share your faith with others. Fear doesn't come from God. It comes from Satan. You know, he's your mortal enemy. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. The Holy Spirit living in you will teach you what to say, and he will always be with you. That didn't take too long, did it? So now the person you're ministering to has heard the five scriptures. You thoroughly explain the gospel. They want more. What do you do next? Everyone close your Bibles and look at the back cover. I've asked my friend Joshua to read the back cover for us. Joshua, can you come up here for me? Everybody having a good time? Yeah. Well, I hope y'all are learning stuff. Trying hard here. Understand the five highlighted verses in this Bible. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and you are willing to speak these truths with your mouth. The gift of life in Jesus will be yours. Simply tell God that you accept his forgiveness for your sins in your life. Tell him thanks for the free gift of life in his son Jesus. Now is the time to embrace Jesus as Lord and Savior. Lord, I know I'm a sinner, but I thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for my sin and rose on the third day so that my sins could be forgiven and I could be with you forever. Thank you for loving me. I'm ready to follow you and give my life to you. Please help me along the way and allow me to know you better each day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Real quick, everybody got your bracelets? Tell them the prize for you. Turn them inside out. Y'all see the scriptures there? See that they're color coordinated, just like on the other side? The scriptures on each one of these are the Old Testament equivalents of the New Testament scripture that y'all just went through. Them up on your own time. <laughs> if you want to know what they are, it'll 
be worth your time, I promise. If you like using the Time to Revive Bibles and bracelets, and you want to continue using them to help Pastor Steve, he's got a supply of them. I hope you guys will be so excited about using these tools that you'll use up the ones that he's already bought and you'll encourage him to buy some more. I hope you guys will be excited about using these tools. For those who decide to pick up your game and make evangelism your lifestyle, I suggest you, cho you choose your tools and then learn how to start using that's it. What do y'all think? Yeah. Justin, who are you going with? I'm going to a barbecue with Pastor Steve. Are you riding with somebody in a minute or you got to go ahead and go? I'll ride on the way. Okay. Yes, sir. Would it be better for you to go with me because we're going like right here local? Well, my ride will be here in like five minutes. Oh, they're coming here. I got you. I got you. You're good. You're good. I'm going to slow this for you. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Let's do this. How many groups do we have? Total groups. If you reference, um, so Rob, you, Lori, Vanya. Well, we're going to go quick here. Okay. One group. And then you, you four, right? Roger, Drew, you. Yeah, Jeremiah. And then you guys, that's three, right? Our group, four. Your group, five. Your group, six. Your group, seven. Okay? So I'm just I'm doing this quick. I know where we're going. Okay, here's what I want to do. Rob's group and um, Jameson's group, Walmart. And you're not going to shop, boys. Okay? <laughs> Shoplifting. I'm kidding. Um, Walmart. Auburndale Walmart. Okay, we're going to go for an hour, right, John? We need to go and be back. Where's John? In an hour ish. Because we've got to eat lunch, but see, souls are more important. Let's be back at 12 45. Okay, so we got less than an hour. Okay. So you got to get down to business when you get to Walmart. Listen, real quick. Walmart, stay with me. Walmart, um, Jameson's crew, Walmart. Rob's crew, Walmart. Alicia, you're going to love this one. Alicia's crew and Robin's crew, Lowe's. Okay? Stay out of the garden center, ladies. Okay? No, that's where you go witness. Okay, how many crews do we have left? Okay. Your crew, okay, Josh, Eddie, who did I miss? I think that's it, okay? Um, racetrack is like jammed with people. And then there's, we just sent you right back to Publix in Auburndale. I said you've already been there once for us today. Racetrack, just buy something. Now, here's what I want to encourage you to do. Just pray on your way. Ask Holy Spirit. He will literally lead you to someone. And you won't have to worry about what to say. Strike up a conversation. Can I pray with you? There's no way you're going to memorize everything that you've been taught today. Well, what am I going to say? Holy Spirit will bring back to you bits and pieces of what was said here today. He really will. That's And, and stuff that you already have in you. Okay? And if you feel like leading somebody straight on into the Lord, the Holy Spirit's leading that way, go for it. You've got the tools. Um, you know, well, I don't have them polished yet. I've, I've, I've not memorized all that. That's why it's there in front of you. Use what you can use and uh, do what you can do. That's probably a stupid question. Are we giving them the, the Bible with the color-coded bracelet at the same time that they accept Christ? Yeah, if you get right. that, that far in it, right. absolutely, okay? You might end up just praying for somebody. But you might be praying for a miracle. So we're giving this, or yeah, we're giving this and the color code. Those are things you give away. You don't have to lead somebody to Christ. You can give away the Bible, the bracelet, and the pocket testament, ladies. Just give them away. I mean, you know, it's the Word of God. Yeah. So right. even, if, even if you don't lead them through the prayer, it's okay. Let them take that with them. Right. It's a touch. Okay.
okay? Yeah. So, um, everybody, every group has, yes? Well, this is for today. You'll have one assignment because we got to get back. There are more. The church purchased a lot of this, these materials. And we're going we're gonna to stay with this stuff, guys. This isn't just something that's going to happen and then we'll fly by the seat of our pants. This is like priority next to prayer, okay? The harvest. Amen? We're going to stay like on this. Uh, Jeff and Robin are going to be helping us with this. And um, surprise, I think they already know they're going to be helping us. Yes, we got to go quick. Can I get an amen, John, or an old me? Okay, we're good. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. All right. What group did I not um, hit hit on? Everybody's good? Oh, yeah, I heard the question. Everybody, please feel free to give away both of them. Yes. This is oh. not something you want to hold on to. Right, yes. Feel free to give it to somebody. You want to touch it. That's a touch for Jesus. It's a seed. It's the word of God. So please yeah. give them away. Okay, let's go to our assigned destinations. We have an hour to be back, right? So you're probably going to target one person. Now listen, if it's short and sweet, find somebody else. Ask Holy Spirit to lead you. Y'all can stay.